hey you guys kicking back on my recliner today as i just got done producing this house meeting the first house meeting that took place in virginia our first time ever to virginia if you are interested in hosting a house meeting in your area shoot us an email we'd love to make that happen i'm excited for you to watch how many people had never experienced the holy spirit before a lot of the people in there were very skeptical um and so watch how gently the holy spirit works with everybody make sure you click that notif notification bell that way you will be alerted when episode two, three, four come out and make sure you click like, and I love to hear from you. So leave me a comment. All right, here we go. So where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We know that the Bible says where the spirit of God is, there's freedom. And I want you to think with me for a moment about this idea of freedom. And, and it, it covers a lot more than we think it does. It's the idea that I'm not stuck. The Bible says that we are led about in a broad and spacious place. And there are times and situations where the enemy will come into our lives and he will make us feel like we're trapped. Trapped in a relationship. Trapped, come on, sometimes we feel trapped in a conversation. You ever been there? The Lord says that the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And what I hear the Lord saying is, in some regard, that's the plumb line that he's given to us. That's the measuring stick that he's given to us to say, Am I walking in the fullness of Christ or am I not? Am I stuck? Do I have freedom? Do I feel like I can move? Or are there places and spaces in my life that I feel like this is just it? I can't change it. I'm stuck in it. I'm trapped in it. And God says that it is for freedom that he set you free. It is for freedom that he has set you free. Stand firm then in your freedom. And just that word over and over again, hearing in the scriptures where God has set you free. Free from what? You answer the question. I mean, the Holy Spirit lets you answer the question and say, like, what is the area in my life where I feel like I'm stuck and I feel like I'm trapped? And the enemy wants you to feel like you cannot move from there. And God says tonight that the Spirit of the Lord is here. And the spirit, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so I'm going to just really speak that word in this room, just that we are free. And when we say free, like in our space, we, we've got lots of buildings and stuff like that. And, and we do events all the time. And every once in a while, we have these praise and worship nights. And we always start by saying, what are the rules? And everybody's like, there are no rules. Like they know that's what, what we're going to say is like, there are no rules. And so we say, well, we like to practice liberty and sensitivity. So in other words, everybody say hi to Shannon, who's trying to see across the room. She's from Michigan. Um, so, and also say hi to Shirley, who came from the UK. Hey. I think she gets a free book for going to Harvest, so let's just give her a free book. Um, so, so we always say well, we're here to practice liberty but sensitivity. In other words, you're free, but I'm also going to be sensitive to those who don't want to operate in a particular way. So in other words... You're free to speak in tongues, but I'm not going to judge you if you're not speaking in tongues. Come on, because religion judges both sides. It judges both ways. It means I'm free to dance in the spirit, but I'm not going to judge you if you start dancing in the spirit. And I'm not going to judge you if you're sitting in the corner quietly rocking back and forth, going through some sort of healing. So you're free. You're free to respond to the Holy Spirit however you want to respond. People ask me all the time when people fall out slain, where is that in the Bible? And I'm like, if you're asking me if the word slain in the spirit is in the Bible, the answer is no. But if you're asking me if there's a history of God showing up and people having a physical response to his presence, the answer is yes. In fact, we should expect that if we serve a God who is supernatural, who is big, who is powerful, why would he not have an effect on my physical body? I want to serve a God who has a physical effect on my body. I want to be healed when I need to be healed. Come on, I want to be corrected when I need to be corrected. I want to, be, I want to have the conviction of the Holy Ghost when I need the conviction of the Holy Ghost. I want to dance when I feel the joy of the Lord. I want to serve a God who is so big, he can have a physical effect on my body. So when Jesus speaks in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says to the soldiers, I am he. And the sound of his voice, the Bible says, they drew, drew back as though they were dead. Because the sound of Jesus' voice had an effect. 
It had an effect on their physical body. Freedom means I get to respond. Come on, I get to respond to what God is inviting me into. I get to respond. And so I just want to speak into this room that you are free. I don't know where you came from. I don't know where, you, where you're leaving when you go here. But just even in this space right now, I've never met Crystal before. But we don't have to know. I don't have to know her to know that this is a safe space where you get to be free to respond without judgment, without inhibition, without intimidation, without intimidation. And so, God, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for the freedom that you bring into our room. And we declare, let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Let freedom reign. May freedom be loosed in this room right now in the name of Jesus. We declare every religious spirit is broken. Come on, every religious spirit is broken. With it goes witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that there is no manipulation. There is no control. But God, we are free in the spirit, if you would, if you feel led by the spirit. Only if you feel led by the spirit, I'm not going to tell you how to worship, how to respond. But if you feel led, I want you to just say, thank you, I am free. Thank you, Jesus, I am free. Thank you, Jesus, I am free. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for being a God who is big and for being a God who is powerful. Now we see all throughout the scriptures, through the book of Mark in my book, um, Come and See, I talk a lot about the discipleship process that we see Jesus um, demonstrating in the scriptures. And in Mark chapter 3, 4, 5, and 6, we see, I don't like to use the word pattern, but we see kind of this model that Jesus gives to us where he invites disciples to come with him, to come alongside him. He says, come and follow me. And that word follow me in the Greek is the, it's the word akalutheo. It's where we get the word acolyte from, from the Catholic religion, the acolytes, the altar boys that would follow follow the priests and would train and teach under them. It's the same concept when he said, come and follow me. And he invited them to follow him. And then in Mark chapter four and five, uh, in chapter four and four, he says, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And he begins to teach them. And he says things like, imagine a world like this, right? So he begins to stretch their understanding, stretch their imagination, get them to consider that the kingdom is like something you've never experienced before. And so he gives them this verbal teaching, and he teaches them. But then in Mark chapter 5, something changes. He basically says, everything I just spoke to you, I am now going to demonstrate. And in Mark chapter 5, we see the demonstration of the full gospel, where he heals, he delivers the man with the legion of demons. He heals the woman with the issue of blood, and he resurrects Jairus' daughter. And in Mark chapter 4 and 5, what we see is the full gospel being preached. It's the message of salvation. It's the deliverance from demons. It's the healing from sickness and afflictions. And it's the resurrection, resurrection and the restoration of things that have been broken and dead in your life. The full gospel message. And then in Mark chapter 6, he says this. Now, you go and do it. And what we see there is kind of this premise as a, the see one, do one, teach one. And we see this all throughout our culture. If you wanted to be a nurse, you would go to school and you would get information. And then you would watch somebody do it. And then they would say, now you do it. And then they know you've mastered the skill when you can then again, then you can turn around and you can teach it. And we see that all throughout our culture, except for in the church. We don't see it in the get the book. <laughs> we don't see it in the church. It's come and see. <laughs> We don't see it in the church. What we see in the church is a whole lot of information. We barely see demonstration. And we hardly see discipleship. And we've, we've diminished the word discipleship down to Bible, Bible study, study school, study classes, Sunday school, whatever. Where you sit in a class, you sit in a chair like this, and somebody feeds you information. Well, I'm sorry, if I'm going to have heart surgery, I want somebody who's done more than just sat in a class and gotten information from a book or from an instructor. I want somebody who's seen it, he's stood there, he's watched it, he's had somebody watch him, and he could teach somebody else how to do it. Come on, that's how you pick your heart surgeon. But we're not doing the same thing in the kingdom. 
And so everything you'll see me do is based on that heart, that passion to teach people, not just to have a knowledge of God. And a lot of us have a knowledge of God. We have information about God, but we've never, to borrow your words, Crystal, to borrow the Jesus's word, we've never tasted and seen that he is good. You know, you, you, Jen, you, this morning, you're like, hey, we got to go get some coffee at this amazing little coffee shop, right? And we believed you that the coffee was good because you've tasted the coffee. I mean, nobody had to be like, hey, let me tell you about my coffee. Here's how we brew it. This is the temperature. And this is kind of the taste that it has. Let me teach you how to share about our coffee. Like, nobody had to do that. She's like, stop staring at me. She, nobody had to teach you how to do that. You want to know why? Because you had tasted and you had seen. And the church has become a lot about teaching people how to evangelize before we teach them how to taste and see that he is good. And tonight, I want you to taste him. So I'll, I, you, my voice pretty much carries pretty well because I have a big mouth. Come forward for me. So I know your name is Jenny. I'm going to have you stand just like this. Okay. And step forward for me. Come on up. And have your hands out just like this. Now, there's nothing. Sometimes I use the word magical on TikTok, and people are like, it's magic. Whatever. I like to play with people on TikTok because they talk a lot of smack, and it's fun. I'm sorry I keep just pulling your hands forward. Okay. I'm actually just trying to get you to relax a little bit. Okay. So I know that this is Jenny, and I know you came with Joe, and I, I think you're from, I don't know where you're from. Scottsville. Where? Well, near Charlottesville. Okay, none of that means Virginia. anything to me. Okay, Virginia. she's from Virginia. <laughs> I'm from Texas. My name is Lisa. That's all we need to know, and Virginia. his name is Jesus. Okay. So the point is, is I've never met her before. I don't, I don't know anything about you. I think you mentioned that she's in prison ministry. Is that correct? So really, that's all I know about her. So I don't, when I pointed to you, I didn't necessarily have a word for you. I just have felt drawn to you in the spirit as we were praying. Um, but even as I'm standing here now, I, I see an overflow of a pour outpouring upon you. Um, and I really feel like the Lord is pouring out a new thing upon you, a refreshing, a spirit. The scripture talks a lot about how repentance being, brings about seasons of refreshing. And I really feel like you've been in a season of, of really being very serious with the Holy Spirit. The psalmist says, search me and seek me, see if there be any wicked way with me. And there's been a seriousness about you and just really allowing the Holy Spirit to search you and to seek you. And I feel the Lord is saying that he's going, he is releasing a refreshment upon you like a river, like a fountain from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes because of the season of repentance that you have been ser very serious with. And so if you go ahead and close your eyes. So God, I just thank you for my sister. I pray, Holy Spirit, we just declare right now in the name of Jesus per the, per the invitation of the Holy Spirit, right? So now I'm not making up something to pray over her. I'm just speaking into what God has shown me and what God is speaking. And so I thank you, God, for the seriousness. Now, she, I can tell she can already feel the Spirit just beginning to get super heavy on her. I haven't even touched her yet. Now, really what's happening is a lot of times I just give people room to allow that word to really saturate all the way through. The Bible says that the depths of God speaks to the depths of man. Sometimes we're a little bit too much of a hurry, and sometimes we're in a little bit too much of a hurry. And so, Father, I thank you, Holy Spirit. So for those of you who cannot see your face, again, I'm not trying to tell all, but I do want you to be equipped. We can see she's bearing witness with the word. She's got tears going. Anytime I see anything coming out of the body, things are coming out of the body. We'll leave it with that. <laughs> things are coming out of the body, right? So we can see she's receiving some healing right now. And I just really, I really feel like the Lord says um, that he's affirming some things for you even right now, some things you've been praying for. It's almost as if even as I began to speak that, I almost see the water turning into oil. Oh, gosh. Even as I'm standing here, and I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for the outpouring, the fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and there's a, you know, you've almost been asking the Lord, like, is this it? Is this, is this as good as it's going to get? And the Lord is saying tonight, now he's going he's gonna to turn things up. He's going to dial it up a notch. And even as I saw the water turning to oil, I, I kind of felt like it was a rep representation of just a double portion of all that God has been doing in your life that he wants to increase that. And so, God, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, right now in the name of Jesus. We just declare that outpouring right now. There it is. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I just give her a minute. How many of you are like freaking out right now? Because we've locked all the doors you can't get out. Just like that. You're next. Come on up. I, I will call people up. I will call people up, but it's a lot of fun when you just come up and get it. 
Like, because God wants you to put a demand on what he has in mind for you, and God wants you to want him, right? What I can tell you and what I can promise you is God has something for all of you in this room, all of you in this room. And at some point in our life, look, the Bible says, for whosoever believeth, what does the Bible say? (laughs) (laughs) Shall not perish, will have everlasting life. I was testing you guys. No, I wasn't. I had a blank. I'm I'm in menopause. Forgive me. So, um, but the point is, is God has some, he is the savior to everybody, right? The key to salvation is at some point you have to step forward and receive it, right? And so there's power in saying like, if this is, if this is real, which it is, but if God has something for me, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. And so there's that invitation that you have in the spirit. So I say all that to say, you can come on board. I say all that to say, you don't have to wait on me to call you. If you're like, I want this, then come on forward. I've never met you before, have I? Tell me where you're from. Norfolk, Virginia. Nor- How far is that from here? Like three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. So did you ha- drive here just for this? No, I'm a student at Daniel. Okay, okay, very cool. So how did you find out about this? Uh, word of mouth. Word of mouth? Yeah. Oh, do you know people? Yes. Yeah, you we know met the other night. Okay, fantastic. Tell me your name. Caroline. Caroline, take a step forward for me. So, Caroline, I don't know anything about her. I would be lying to you if I'm like, I know exactly what God is going to say to her. That's not how it works. Sometimes it works like that, but almost never <laughs> also. So it's on faith, right? So we throw our faith out, and we let the Holy Spirit just begin to work. If I don't get a very specific word for her, I can still pray the word of God over her, right? So I can still encourage her in the word. So go ahead and close your eyes for me. Father, I thank you for Carolina. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing her here. And I thank you, Father, for all that you have rescued her from. I really feel like I saw the finger of the Lord just kind of pulling and almost like plucking out a diamond out of an ash heap. And so, Father, I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that when the world looked at you, and there have been times you've even looked at yourself and you've been like, man, I'm just a heap of ashes. But more recently, you've started to kind of see something different. It's like you feel the stirring of the Lord in your heart, and he's beginning to present to you a new you. And there's part of you that's like, oh, that's unbelievable. And God's like, it is unbelievable because it's supernatural. And the things I want to do in your life, and I almost feel like that diamond that he's pulling out and showing you is the anointing that he has in mind for you. And so, Father, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have selected her. I'm going to say selected even for such a time as this. In the Old Testament, there's a, there's a priest, his name is Joshua, and it's when, when Israel is in, in rubbish. And the, and the Bible says that God, the angel of the Lord, picked him up and took off his nasty turban and took off his nasty clothes and basically replenished it all by grace. In a moment, he was all of the, all of the garments of his yesterday, listen to me, all of the garments of his yesterday by grace were removed from him in a moment. It's one of the many times that we see in the Old Testament somebody that is redeemed just by grace. And and I feel like the Lord is saying that is you, that you are a remnant. I almost feel like he's saying you're a remnant to your family and that he is pulling you up out of the ash heap. And he says, if you would believe me and if you would just let me and you would stop working for your, come on, if you would stop working, (laughs) if you would stop working for your salvation, you would stop working for your anointing and you would just trust that I am a God of grace and you would just relax and receive what I already did for you on the cross, what you're going to discover is that the yoke of the Lord is easy Mm -hmm. and his burden is light. And so, God, I thank you for Caroline, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, and I'm just going to let you set into that word here for a moment. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that it is a new day for you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that she would see it, not just see it the way he sees it, but there would be a yes and amen when you see it, that you would say, yep, that's me. That's the anointing that God has given to me. Here I am, God, I'm ready, and I'm going to let you have your way with me. And I hear the Father say, you can trust him. You can trust him. He's not like man. He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to betray you. And he's never going to leave you, and he's never going to abandon you. So I take authority over spirits of rejection and betrayal that have come against you, and I've sh- I break you free from them. And I speak over you, Caroline, you are not rejected, you are accepted. You are not looked over, you are chosen. You are God's child, beautiful, chosen. The Bible says that he can't take his eye off of you. And so God, we thank you that even right now, even right now, there we go. I'm just calling forth an out fresh, just a fresh pouring of his love to just come upon you. 
his love to just come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Caroline, I just speak healing over you. I speak healing over your past. I impress into you courage, courage for all that God has called you into. And I remind you that he is faithful. He is faithful to finish all that he starts. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You can stay in that space all as long as you want. So obviously you can see she bears for witness with her word. How many of you feel like she got some healing? <laughs> Did you get some healing? Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Thank you. You're welcome. So you can see not everybody falls. Some people are like, why do some people fall out and some people don't? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't pick. Um, there are some people like us who she threw her head back. If I'd have given you a nice little shove, you probably would have gone down. A lot of times, it's true, right? Because you kind of were like, whoop. But it's just not my style. I don't have a problem when people do do it. It's just not my style because the places and spaces that God takes me is a lot of times people who are very new to this, right? And so I want them to feel the hand of God on them. That's why I will touch, but I'm very minimal in my touching. Again, I don't have a problem with people who do that. I just, it's just not my style. Yeah. And so where are you from this area? Okay, very cool. I've never met you before. Very cool. Go ahead and close your eyes. So again, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to jump in and see what the Lord has in mind. Because what I know is what I know is God loves Rebecca, and I also know he knows everything about her. So I'm not looking for her. I'm looking for the Lord. I'm looking for the Holy Spirit, right? And so, Father, I thank you for Rebecca, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing her here today. And I really feel like there's been a lot of twisting and winding in your past. A lot of curves and moves and um, almost places where you've tried to elude the presence of God, where you've tried to kind of get out of what he's been calling, calling you into. But God is stubborn for you. And more specifically, Rebecca, he's stubborn for the purpose that he has in mind for you. He's got a plan for you. The Bible says that all the days ordained for you are written in a book. And I think a lot of times we forget that God is stubborn for the plan that he has in mind for us. And sometimes we veer to the right and God will bring us right back onto that path. And sometimes we spend more energy and time trying to get away from God and the plan that he has for us than just surrendering and submitting to it. And so I see a lot of kind of twisting and turning. But yet then I see right as I kind of come into your space where the, where the path kind of straightens out. And there's a verse in the Bible that talks, there's two verses in the Bible in the Old Testament where it's prophesied about the coming of Jesus. And then again, in the Gospels where it says, uh, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And it talks about making crooked paths straight to remove the mountains, um, to fill in the valleys. And it's the idea, it's the idea of creating a path or create a passageway where the king literally could enter into the heart of that city. Um, it was a way that a city would communicate to a king who was coming by, we want you to come into our city instead of going around our city. So when I see this straight line, I really feel like the Lord, there's been a lot of things in your life that you've been straightening out and that you've been preparing the way for a perfect passageway for the Holy Spirit to enter into deeper spaces into your heart. And, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with her. That's just the presence of the Lord coming on you. <laughs> So, Father, I thank you, Lord. And so I, I'm just going to speak into that straight and narrow path. And I'm going to declare that all the rubble from yesterday has been removed. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for a clear passageway. And I'm speaking a deeper journey into your heart. That the Holy Spirit would go deeper and deeper and deeper. And even as he goes deeper into you, and the Bible talks about in John chapter 7, that there's a river of life that flows up out of us. Right? So there's this river, and so the deeper the river goes in us, the more it flows out of us. We, we learn about this in Ezekiel. It talks about the river that flows from the temple. And it was a vision that Ezekiel was given, but it's an, a prophetic word of the river that flows out of us as a people of God because you are that temple, Rebecca. And so even as you've prepared, when you think about like a, creating a canal where the river, the Holy Spirit, can rush into the depths of your heart so that you can minister out of the overflow of your heart. I really feel like the Lord's going to begin to bring opportunities into your life to minister to people around you. Um, and I really feel like you're ready, is what I feel like the Lord is saying, is you're ready. Because all those crooked things, you've gotten them right. You've gotten them straightened out. With the Holy Spirit, I even see there were places where you have cut out of your life, things that you have completely cut off, things that were less than best. You've kind of been in a season where you've been like, I'm not okay with permissible. 
I'm chasing down the beneficial, like you're getting serious about your relationship with the Lord. And so, Father, I thank you for Rebecca, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the clear passageway that you've impressed into her and upon her in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God. We thank you, God. Come on, Rebecca, today is your day. Today is your day. As soon as you can, Rebecca, I want you to activate that anointing. Anybody have questions? No, 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 no. How do I hear the voice of the Lord that strong? Um, well, it starts in my closet, not here tonight. It starts on a daily practice. And everybody hears the voice of God. The problem is we don't recognize his voice because we haven't been, we haven't been interacting with him enough. So if you remember in the Old Testament when Samuel said, I'm hearing something, and Eli was like, oh, that must be the voice of God. Well, they didn't recognize it because they had been a period of silence and not hearing. So he was hearing something, but he didn't recognize it. And in John chapter 10, it says, my sheep know my voice. So it's not a matter of hearing, it's a matter of recognizing. And so if I'm hearing something and it lines up with the word of God, I know it's the voice of God. If I'm seeing something, sensing something, seeing, sensing, right? Seeing, sensing something, and it lines up, and typically for me, because my strongest gift is actually wisdom of the word, and so for me, it usually comes with an actual scripture passage, so you'll hear me throwing out scripture passages. I teach and train people all the time that work at art, and I'm like, look, if you have to pull out your phone and Google it, Google it. It's okay. You don't have to have the scripture memorized. It's still just as powerful if you read it from your, your phone. It's fine. So I don't know if, did I answer your question? It's not a matter of hearing. It's a matter of recognizing, because God is, is speaking. When the sun comes up in the morning, he's speaking. Are you recognizing what he's saying to you? And so it's teaching yourself to recognize his voice. And we learn how to recognize his voice by reading the word and interacting with the word. So I'm not just reading the word. In, in, in Psalm 119, it talks all about the meditations of the word. Nowhere does it say to read the word. It says to digest it, to meditate on it, to remember it, to hide it, to think upon it. Nowhere does it say to read it. And as a people of God, if we're lucky, we're reading the word. But we're not meditating on it. We're not having conversation with it. We're not dialoguing with the Holy Spirit, asking him, what is he saying to me? Those kinds of things. So that's how we recognize the voice. But let me also say this. I don't hear the whole message, right? So I get a word, and I just go with it. And so you'll, you'll see how the Lord, so like for her, I'm like, okay, I'm seeing this crooked something. And immediately connected a passage. I know what that passage means, so I have an assumption of what God is doing in her heart, right? Or knowing. Sometimes it's an assumption, sometimes it's a knowing. But I know what the I know what the word means. I know when he's talking about prepare you the way of the Lord, that it's the idea of I want the king to come into the center of the heart. Right? So that gives me a sensing of what God's been doing in her life, but it also tells me what he's where he's taking her. Why would he do that? Because he's taking her into ministry, right? So did you bear witness with your word? Yes. And they're very different from everybody else's, correct? It's always fun for me as I'm like, sometimes I'll be like, I don't think there's anything else. And God's like, yeah, there is. 